What's up, Get Better Basketball community? I'm Coach DeMarco, and this is Focus. In today's episode, I'm going to talk to you about one of the keys to full court pressure defense, sprinting, and share with you four drills that will help your team to improve this area and improve your full court pressure defense. The first thing I'm going to talk to you is one of the drills we really like as a one versus one drill. And that's chase layups. We're going to transition the triangle fast break, our sprint and recover drill, and trap and go. So the first drill is chase layups. It's a really, really simple concept, something you've probably seen before with your team. And I'm just going to put players in a line over here. I'm going to put players in a line under the basket. I'm going to put players in a line on this sideline, and I'm going to put players in a line under this basket. So really, really simple. As we bring it back down here, our four player is going to start actually on the block. You could have them throw the ball off the backboard, but it's a longer chase. I like to start them on the block, or depending on the level, you could even use the hash lines. But all they're going to do is they're going to outlet – to this one player, pretty much free to a line extended. They could be a little bit higher. You can bring them in a little bit. And this player is going to dribble the length of the floor and attack the basket. And it's going to be exactly what I say it's going to be, which is this four player is going to chase them down the floor as fast as they can. They're going to learn to sprint full speed because that's the focus. As this player goes in, they're going to try to catch them, and they're going to defend them. And then all we're going to do is the one who was the layup person is going to come into this line, and they're going to become the back of that line, and four is going to go back here. And at the same time, 10 will have outletted to nine, who's going to dribble down the floor. 10 is going to chase, and they're going to go down, and they're going to contest. And you're going to continue on. So on this end of the floor, nine took the layup. So our nine player is going to come to the back of this line and 10 is now going to work on their layup. So you're going to continue this on and I'll show you one more example down here with our five player and our two player. Five is going to get, get the ball out of the basket from nine's layup and <clears throat> maybe take a dribble or two and bring theirself up here. They're going to outlet and they're going to sprint. Two is going to go down and they're going to challenge their layup. So you're going to teach them to sprint full speed down the floor. They're going to contest layups down this end of the floor or the other end of the floor as they try to finish. It's going to be a great layup drill where you're finishing with contact, but you're training these players in this line to sprint down the floor and to try to get there and defend the player. So you're ingraining into them the importance of this word, and I'm going to keep coming back to it, and that is sprinting. So really simple drill. It serves multiple purposes. Like I said, finishing with contact. It also is a drill that you can do with your players to also ingrain in them chasing and sprinting back on defense. So chase layups, first drill of the four drills that we're going to do. Second one is going to be our triangle fast break. We're going to come down this end of the floor and we're going to have our offensive player. And I have a whole video that's dedicated to triangle fast break. I'll put in the description down below with a complete breakdown. We're going to have our defender one and defender two on the hash lines. This player is going to start with the basketball. We're going to go to half court. We're going to have our defender three. We're going to go to the other end of the floor and we're going to have our defender number four. So four defenders on the floor. I'm going to add in... Uh, offensive players in different spots on the floor. We're going to have an offensive player uh, two here. We're going to have offensive player three in the corner. We're going to go to the other side of the floor, and we're going to have offensive player number four. So when you look at this drill, when you start out, you're going to have um, a little bit of an advantage, right? You're going to have your Offensive player with the basketball and your two defenders are going to chase. We're actually going to work on in this particular drill, and this is part of sprinting back, we're going to work on back tapping. 
So these two players are actually, as O1 goes, and we can start on O1, they're going to go down the floor. D2 and D1 are going to try to chase, and they're going to try to back tap. If they're able to back tap the basketball, say to D3, you actually could then attack on offense. We're not going to get into that. I talk about that when I break down the triangle fast break. As I said, it'll be in the description down below. But they're going to chase and they're going to work to come and back tap. We know that as they're working the back tap, this player is working up the floor, D3 is going to also be sprinting back. D4 is going to sprint back to protect the basket. And ideally, you would have your D4 player here. You'd have D3 here. And this O1 player, when they get to half court, they can make a pass. You could change the rules based on what you want. We usually did half court. A lot of times they would fire the ball up to one of these corner players, which would force this player to come out, this player to rotate down. And then our other players, so I'm going to just put O1 here because they just made that pass. We put D4 out here in the corner, D3 in the paint. And now we know that these two players, D1 and D2, have to get matched up. So let's just say D1 comes here and our you know, D2 player, depending on where the basketball is, could potentially end up somewhere in the middle. If it's over here, they sort of in that helpline position. So now we get matched up. So you, I'm going to use another term. and I'm going to mention this a little bit later on as well, and that is to fix it. You're actually learning to sprint, which is the purpose of each of these drills, but then to fix it. And when I say fix it, it's to get matched up. We're matched up here. We're matched up here. We're matched up here. And we're matched up here defensively. When you press, one of the important things is to fix it on the other end of the floor. So not only are we working on sprinting, but working on getting matched up and quote unquote fixing it because we wouldn't want in this situation to have players matched up when you fix it that might have or create mismatches. So for example, this is a great opportunity if this is say a post type player, I'm just going to put a five over here just to make it a post player. And this was a point guard, again, just for the sake of what we're showing here. And we'll make this, uh, you know, the two player, that's fine. And this was your D5 these two players would have to communicate with each other and say, hey, let's rotate. Let's work back. D5 would come down here. Point guard would come up here and get a matchup with a two guard. That's fine. And you'd have these two players matched up. So fixing it doesn't just mean getting matched up, but it means getting matched up appropriately as you would want to. And it, it takes a lot of communication, pointing, talking um, <clears throat> that you have to do in these situations to quote unquote fix it. So triangle fast break. Second drill, love it because these players that are going to start, and I'm going to bring it back down this end of the floor, these two players, D1 and D2, we'd rotate. We'd do four possessions, and we would say, <clears throat> so every player has to rotate. So D1 would start in this spot, and then D1 would go to this spot, and then you know D2 would rotate, D3 would rotate, and then we get our D4 player in this spot. And we'd rotate around. You could rotate your offensive players accordingly as well. But these two players that are in this spot, and we know it starts with D1 and D2, they have to sprint into position. And this D3 has to sprint back. So you're really working on sprinting, which is the purpose of all these four drills. I love this for transition offense. I love this for getting matched up in the half court. I love this for communication. I love triangle fast break for so many reasons, but it definitely will work on sprinting. So we have our triangle fast break. We're going to check that off. That's our second drill. The third drill, there are layers to. And this is going to be our sprint and recover drill. There's going to be an on-air aspect to it, which I'll show you. Actually, I'm going to just kind of put these over here so I can show you. There's going to be on-air. There's going to be a fix-it situation. And there's also going to be a fix-it and play. And here, really, really simple. Uh, and this is something I work, I would do with middle school all the way up. This could just be for transition defense, but also great for teams that press. So I would put, um, I'm just going to number them one to five. So one, two, three, 
four, five. You could have them circle. You could have them do whatever you want. You could have um, a coach here, and the coach can throw the ball off the backboard and or blow the whistle, whatever you want, and they are all going to sprint back, sprint back, sprint back, sprint back, and sprint back into the paint. I like to have them yell defense when they sprint back into the paint. And usually what I'll have the coach do is just either throw the basketball or roll the basketball down the floor. They will corral the basketball, and then I would have them clear, and I'd have a second group of five come on. You could do this with three players. You could do this with four players. But the on-air component is really simple. It's just a matter of these players that start in this circle are one, two, three, four, five in any particular order – that are going to sprint back down that end of the floor. So you're teaching them to sprint. It's great in transition. It's great in the press. But we like to use it for, for really both of those reasons. The second aspect we would do is we would have these players. And then I would have offensive players down this end of the floor. One, two. I'm just going to put three, four. They'd probably be on the sideline. I'll put five underneath here. We're going to come back down this end. Again, I'd have the players circulate. I, you could have a coach here with the basketball. Or if you have another coach or a manager, sometimes I like to just put the, them at half court with the basketball. And they would hold the ball for a second when we get going here. So, again, whistle, ball off the backboard. These players are all going to fly down the floor. But now we're going to throw the basketball either from this end of the floor or from here to a player. So let's just say the coach throws it cross court and four catches it, okay? These players are going to sprint down. Three, four, one, two, five. And they're going to get matched up. And they're going to communicate to fix it. So number one is they want to get matched up. But number two is, and we're not going to play live here, we're just going to fix it. And we'll say, say one sprints down into the paint. And, and, and this is our, our uh, five player out here. They would talk to them and say, you know, hey, uh, you know, right now we might not be able to switch it. So where the basketball is. But if the basketball was on the other side of the floor and uh, two player had it, they could communicate and five could walk down and say, hey, bump out, bump out. And we could fix it and we could get matched up. So um, <clears throat> great drill. You could just work on it to get matched up. But at the varsity level, as players are, are more experienced, and you're going to really work on the full court pressure defense. You want to work on getting matched up and communicating. So at the very least, it's great for transition D. But at the most, it's awesome to fix it in full court pressure. So really two things you're going to get out of this type of drill, the sprint and recover drill. This is something we did early in the year to work on getting matched up in our defense. So really simple concept. And the last piece to this drill, last, last, last piece, as we come back down here, is to fix it and play. So again, we're going to have our players down here. Sometimes I would have them run an offensive set. So you could actually start your offense out here. One, two, three, four, five, oh, whatever. Oh, here we go. We're going to go dribble jive. We're going to go with a kickback, and you're going to make a layup, and then we're going to turn, and we're going to sprint down the other end of the floor. So you could actually start with an offensive possession. Those players are then going to, as I said, they're going to sprint down the floor, and they're going to have to get matched up. So again, I'm just going to put players out here. We're going to put our five down here. We're going to put our four, our three. They're going to sprint back and get matched up. So we're going to put D1, D2, D5, D4, assuming they all get matched up perfectly. And then we're going to play it live, and we usually give the offense like 10 seconds to score. So they have to sprint back. But here's the thing. We throw the basketball in. So when we throw the basketball, we're not waiting for them to get down the floor. What I like to do is we're sprinting back. I throw the ball into this one player, and maybe that player is not back yet, and they're attacking the basket, and now they have an advantage. Because one of the things that coaches like to say with the press is you give up layups. Oh, you're going to give up some layups. No, we're not going to give up layups. That's not something we like to do with the press. We don't want to give up anything. And, and really, we didn't give up open layups or fast break layups because we focused on sprinting 
in the press. We didn't give up layups for that reason because we always sprinted. So that's going to be really important as we move forward and we talk about full court pressure defense. So last drill, I'm going to bring us through here. All right. We've done our chase layups. We've done our triangle fast break, our sprint and recover. Now we're going to work on trap and go. So this is actually a really nice simulation to full court pressure defense. What I would do is I would set up an offensive player, 01, in the corner with the basketball. And I would put, say, I don't know, whatever, whoever you're going to put on the, the ball. I would maybe put D4 and D1 here. And then I would actually put, um, you know, maybe put like an offensive player here, 02, maybe put 03 here. We're trying to create a little bit of an advantage in this particular situation. I maybe put our uh, uh, D3 here. We could put our D2 back here in this area. Now, ideally, we would like to adjust our defenders, but we're trying to create an advantage here in this particular situation. I actually then would put our D5 back here, and I actually would put um, O4 and O5 up the floor. So you notice they have an advantage right now. Here's what we're going to do. We're actually, this player, we're going to simulate like they have the basketball. I like to put a coach, uh, you can put them on the sideline, you can put them anywhere you want, but I'm just going to put a C here. And coach is going to have the basketball. And we're going to do is on the whistle, we're going to go live out of this situation. Coach could throw it up to 04, and they have a two-on-one. This player has to sprint back, and everybody else does. Sometimes I like to just flip it here. This player, because I know a lot of teams do this in the press, when they catch, this player runs up. No, no, no. This player, when they catch, needs to go this way. And they need to sprint back. And all these other players down here need to sprint out of the trap and get back on defense. So by doing this, you're creating an advantage for the offense, right? You have two offensive players up the floor. And we know this could happen when you press teams. And you're going to have your trap that is starting down in the corner in this area. And you have your two players. So they're going to have you outnumbered right now with four offensive players against three defenders. We have a defender here. We have a defender here. And we have a defender back. And they have their offensive players as triangles in these spots that they actually have us potentially outnumbered. So what they're going to have to do, these three defenders against these offensive players, is work to sprint down the floor, and we're going to play live. I don't like to do this before I teach chase and trap, before we do triangle fast break to sprint back, before we sprint and recover, and we learn how to fix it and get matched up. But I love simulating this out of the trap because teams say, oh, you get your first trap in the coffin corner down this end of the floor, and that's great, but when they throw over the top, you all have to sprint back. Yeah, that's great. We love it. We actually loved when teams would throw the ball up the floor and they would fly down 100 miles an hour because we would sprint back. We would back tap the basketball. They would have a turnover because they make a wild pass or they would get out of control and take a crazy two-point shot from the free throw line or some area here in transition that wasn't good for them. So this is what we wanted in our full court pressure defense. We weren't worried about giving up layups as long as we were sprinting back. So just to recap, four great drills that you can do with your team. You have your chase layups, your triangle fast break, your sprint and recover, and your trap and go. And for me... It was all about this word in our press. If not the most important factor, one of the most important factors was to sprint. This is what we did to not give up those layups when teams threw the ball over the top of the press. Our press was not broken until we gave up a basket. If they got the ball up the floor and advanced it, that's not a broken press because we can turn, we can sprint, there's that word again, we could recover and we could fix it. Sprint, recover, fix it. Our press wasn't broken until that team scored a basket on the other end. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button down below, turn on your notifications, subscribe to Get Better Basketball for more great videos 
each and every week. If you haven't done so already, make sure you purchase a brand new Dr. Dish all-purpose shooting machine to make your team the best shooters they can be. And as always, get better every day.